create these autumn emails once. And then from now on, every time your leads enter your funnel or you capture their leads, they're able to receive the automated emails that are coming from you. A lot of times about five to max 10% of the, your leads will respond back to these automated emails and say, hey, what do I need to do? Or they have questions, you answer them. And through that, you're able to sign them up. All right, so this is up here. How do you do this? Let's do it. I just want you to understand the concept, understand how I do it once. Then once you understand it, then you'll be able to apply it for yourself. Okay. So there's, you know, there's different tools that you'll be able to integrate. You know, you probably have different sources where you get new leads. As long as you understand how to do it, then you'll be able to do it for yourself. Don't try to exactly memorize what I'm doing. Just try to understand what I'm doing. Okay. So the first part is whenever you get a new lead. So if you look at your playbook, where do new leads typically come from? They either usually come from your website's contact form submissions. So if they, you know, if there's a form on your website, that's where you capture your lead. If you capture your leads instead of click funnels, okay, that's another place. What if you get new bookings from leads? That's another trigger for new leads. Or let's just say if a new lead gets added to your CRM, that could be your trigger or anywhere else where new leads come in. Okay, so think about it right now. Where do my leads typically come through? And that's your trigger. Okay, so for this one, I've actually already created it, but let me show the end vision of this and then I'll show you guys what I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually build this out. So what do we do? So let me again, summarize it for you guys. The trigger is the lead comes through ClickFunnels that I'm gonna text the lead. They're gonna receive an automated text in sales message. Then I'm gonna set up an active campaign. I'm gonna add them to active campaign to receive an automated email series in active campaign. Then I'm gonna send, I'm gonna notify my team and say, hey, this new lead come in, call up the lead. And I'm gonna add the leads to my Google Sheets. Okay, so that's what I do. That's the end picture. And now I'm about to go from the beginning and show you guys exactly how it's done. By the way, Zapier, you start off with a free trial. You know, just start up, you know, free trial, just sign up for that. And then depending on um, how many of these automations you use, then the plans goes up. Okay, so that's that's how I know there's always questions about which plan. That's the answer. So what you do is you create a zap. It's a big button. And the first question is, what is the trigger? So again, the trigger is where does the lead come in? So that could either be your uh, contact form submissions, it could come from uh, uh, click funnels, Calendly, your CRM. Where does the where does the trigger come in? For me, you know, a lot of the leads come from click funnels. Okay, so that is the trigger trigger event. So first thing you do is you click, you select the software. What is the trigger event? It's like whenever I have a new contact activity. Okay. So whenever a new contact gets added to ClickFunnels, that is the trigger event. You click on continue. Next is you're going to, you're going to add your ClickFunnels account. You're going to give permission to Zapier that this is your ClickFunnels account. I own this account. So that way they're able to communicate with each other. Okay. So that's what you do here. That's the second step. Then you just select it. It's going to ask you now, you know, depending on what the software is, it's going to ask you very specific questions for that. So for click funnels, it's going to ask you which funnel do you want to apply this to? So, you know, I have a lot of different funnels, but I created a test uh, funnel last night. So I'm going to say this funnel for which funnel step. Funnel step is the landing page is the funnel step. And again, you probably may have not used click funnels and you'd be like, you know, what does this mean? Again, the whole idea is you got to ask yourself, where do my leads come in? And then you create the trigger for yourself. Okay. Click on continue. And that was all the questions that I need to, uh, to set up for the trigger. Last thing you're going to do is you're going to test the trigger to make sure that data came in. So that means you should have a lead that was already submitted from that lead source to make sure that it works inside of Zapier. Okay. So yes, the lead that I already ran through this funnel it has my name, it has my email address, it has my phone number and any other information I may capture when I'm capturing this lead. So yeah, that looks correct. I'm going to click on continue. And that was the trigger. That was the first part. Okay. We're 50% the way through. Next is what's the action that I want. Once this new lead come in, what do I want to do? So for me, I want to text the leads. So I'm going to search for sales message. Sales message this is how it's typed out in Zapier. I'm going to select the app. What's the action event? I want to send a new text message. Click on continue. Which account? That's always going to be the second thing that it's always going to ask for me. You're going to, if you don't have already, if you haven't already set it up, you're going to set it up. So since I've already set it up, I'm going to select that, uh, that account. Continue. Send message as, so again, depending on the app, it's going to ask you its own questions. So for this, this is the phone number that I'm sending texts from. The phone number is to what phone number do you want to send the texts to? Well, 
It's the phone number that I captured from the lead source. Now that's where you get the data from your trigger. Okay, and you're gonna map that data that came from my trigger source and say, hey, I want you to text the phone number that I captured from the trigger. Okay, does that make sense? It's called mapping. You're taking data from another and you're saying, I want you to map this phone number to the phone number that I captured from the trigger. Okay, next is what is the text message you wanna send? Well, here's the good news. If you go to page two, page three on your worksheets, since I do a lot of lead generation and client generation, I've figured out exactly what texts you should automatically text your leads. This is based on, again, thousands of texts sent in order to figure out exactly which one gets the most reply. Okay, so here it is. Let's go through it actually because I think it's pretty, you know, nobody shares this anywhere else. So let me share it with you guys. There's a couple of, the first couple are the ones that are working out great for, for us. So the first one is, hi, first name. This is Sam from, let's just say, Molai Law. When is a good time for us to talk about your car, your work issue, your car accident, getting your LLC, whatever that is. Okay, so that's the text that typically I see works pretty well. And usually the, the trick with these text, automated text is you want to end with a question because I, as I teach inside of Legal Funnel, nothing invokes an answer more than a question. Okay, so if you ever want people to do something or if you want people to reply to you, end with a question. It's a very easy trick. Okay, that's the first text I would, I would text. Another text that you send is, hi, first name. This is senior attorney Sam from Malai Law reaching out. I received your online submission. I would like, I would like to help you. We'll be reaching you out soon. Thank you. It's just a way to notify them. Hey, maybe this one doesn't invoke as much response as the, as the other one, but this also works too. But I typically like the first one the most. Next, this one is also good. Hi, first name. It's Sam, managing attorney at Malai Law. I see you have a employment issue. Is this correct? So what this is doing is invoking a yes or no question. It's a very, it's a very obvious answer. Yes, that is exactly the reason why uh, I'm talking to you. So invoke that yes. That starts the conversation. Another text you could send is an explicit, just their first name question mark. So imagine all of a sudden you get a text that says Sam question mark. And your first, you can't help it. Your first, you know, logical thing that comes to mind for you is like, you'd be saying, who's this? And then that's where you start the conversation. Okay, so that's another trick you can use. Um, it's It works, it invokes a response, but sometimes they could be cut off guard. So that's another one you can use. Or you could say, hi, is this Bob? Or hi, Bob, want some help with blank or hi Bob it's Sam from Lila you scheduled uh, with us with regards to setting up your LLC question mark so these are again different text messages to be able to use so for me you know what I'm gonna I like the first one I'm gonna go back to Zapier and now we have little placeholders where it says hey first name okay so I want to be able to customize that well I captured the name here there are ways, what I do typically do is there is a way to uh, format the full name to split up into first name and last name. What do you do? Let's just say you have a full name and you want to split it up into first name and last name. So, well, there's there's different options that Zapier gives you. There is the filter, which it says, let's just say, for example, if I have a Calendly, if I have ca different Calendly events and I want to say, hey, it should be a trigger every time there's a Calendly event, but only start this Zapier if it has this event name, okay? So I'm able to filter depending on what the answers are. I'm about to say only proceed forward with this Zapier integration if the answer says mentions this. Okay, so that's what filtering is. Formatting is formatting numbers, text, things like that, which is what I'm about to set up. Or delay, hey, I want you to wait 10 minutes before you text somebody, for example. Okay, for, for this, I'm gonna format it. Again, this is the one I'm about to show you right now in the next couple of minutes, in the next minute is a little bit more advanced, but let me just show you guys just in case you wanna split up something. So the action event is I want to format text. Okay. So sometimes if you want to do different formatting to numbers, you put to select numbers. But for this, it's text that I'm formatting. Continue. Transform. What do you want to do basically? Well, you're able to capitalize. And what I want to do is split the text. I want to split the first name and last name into two parts. The input is the full name. Okay. What is the separator? It's this. Just take this. Basically, say every time there's a space, that should be, yeah, that's, that tells Zapier, hey, split up this part segment index is hey i want the first word in this full name continue and test and review so it's taking that sam Malai, my first and last name and spits in the output is sam great now that i have that i'll be able to go back to the sales message uh step and say hey this part where at uh, where i want to put the first name i want you to put that uh, put that output right there so this is Right here, got that? This is Sam 
from Malayla. When is a good time to talk to us about your employment, about your issue at work? Or by your car accident? Whatever that is, okay? So again, take, I gave you guys a bunch of templates for, for different sales messages, make it work for yourself. Great. Next thing I'm gonna do, so first name, I'm gonna take that from the first name. For last name, you basically have to do the same step for this, but except the, the index is gonna be the second right here. When you choose the segment index, it will be second for the last name. Okay, I'm not gonna set that up right now. I just wanted to show you guys how to do that once. First name, again, right here, that came from the first name. Email address, again, that came from your trigger source, which is right here. And continue. And now, test and review. And guess what? I'm gonna receive a text right now, I'm about to show you guys. Let me pull out my texts. There we go. <laughs> Text just automatically came in. Hi, it's Sam. This is Sam, uh, Sam from Malay Law. And it's a good time for us to talk about your car. The trigger worked. Great. I actually received a text about this. That's that's the first trigger. Next thing I'm going to do is to for them to receive automated emails. The action is active campaign. This Now I'm going to go through it a little bit faster. Event is I want you to create or update contact. Continue. Next, as I showed you guys, it's gonna you're going to connect your account. So if you already um, you know, you're only going to do it once. Once you do it once, you're going to just select it, your active campaign account, click on continue. Now it's going to ask you, what do you want to do? Okay. Well, first thing I want you to do is to add to the active campaign list. I, instead of legal funnel, I teach about active campaigns. I show you guys how to set up active campaigns. I'm not going to show it to you guys today for session seven students. That's in module five. We'll be talking about all about active campaign, how to create emails how to create uh, automated emails, what to say in your emails, all that stuff. So I'm not addressing that, but I'm just going to pretend like you guys already have an automated email series set up in Active Campaign. Okay. It's very valuable and it saves a lot of time. The list is, I've already set this up inside of Active Campaign. It's a test list. The email address that I want the emails to go to will come again. You're mapping it from the trigger, which is the email address that I captured in ClickFunnels. The first name is where I created right here, right? Where I created earlier. Bam. Last name is if I would have created the same thing here for the for the second segment, that would be the last name there. Phone number is again, it came, comes from ClickFunnels or your lead source. Tag is a way for you to say, hey, what is the source of this? So let's just say this is coming. It's a ClickFunnels business lead. That's basically how I use tags instead of active campaign. It's just a way to say, hey, add this lead to the test list and tag it as a claim from ClickFunnels. Continue. And test and review. And let me just show you guys, quickly show you guys what that, what this means. Okay, so right now, what I did is I basically added this lead to the test list and I provided, I took that data from ClickFunnels and, and I gave it to ClickFunnels by you know putting the first name here, last name here, phone number here, the email address here. I added a tag and I have an automation. Again, I teach this inside of legal funnel. I go a little bit more in depth about this. I create an automation in active campaign that says, Hey, every time somebody is added to the test list, I want you to send these series of emails. Okay. Send email one. Then I want you to wait for one day and send email two. Okay. Again, for our past funnel, legal funnel students, I already showed you guys this. If not, if you guys are in session seven, it's in module five. It's very valuable to create these automated emails once. And then from now on, every time your leads enter your funnel or you capture their leads, they're able to receive the automated emails that are coming from you. A lot of times about five to max 10% of the, your leads will respond back to these automated emails and say, hey, what do I need to do? Or they have questions, you answer them. And through that, you're able to sign them up, okay? This works. And this is again, how you're able to automatically follow with your leads so that you don't have to actively manually follow with them, send an email, create the system once, and they're able to receive emails from you for the next couple of months, six months, a year. And every time, you know, you send a broadcast email, they're able to receive emails from you. Lawyer Nation, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, take a moment right now to subscribe right below and turn on the bell notification to get notified every time I post a video, because right now I'm posting five videos a week, providing lots of value to lawyers. So click right here to subscribe and to watch the next most relevant video, click right here. Go do it, go watch it.